couple of years ago, my family and I visited a store. My daughter was two and a half years old, and she was on potty training. Now, suddenly, she said the words that no parent ever wants to hear. Mommy, Daddy, I need to do pee-pee. Like, oh my God, red alert, right? Because we all know that it only takes a matter of minutes before, well, you get it. So, we reached out to a store employee in order to ask whether we could use the toilet, and that employee said no. Reached out to a second employee, again, she said no. So we asked for the store manager, and the store manager took a deep breath. <sighs> okay, she can go. Bad experiences like these are common. Now think about it yourself. Think about an interaction that you had with an organization. And if the first one that comes to mind is a positive experience, please raise your right hand. If the first one that comes to mind is a negative experience, please raise your left hand. This is what I see all the time. I always see more left hands than right hands. Bad experiences are common. A recent study by Qualtrics shows that 8 out of 10 consumers want organizations to improve their experience. 8 out of 10. That's quite a lot, isn't it? But how can that be? Didn't we give up on a lot of personal information? personal data that they can use to improve the customer experience? Aren't we filling in all these surveys and writing all these online reviews that they can use to improve the experience? What is going on? How can this situation happen? Is it because they don't care about it? Well, actually, no. They do care about it. Improving the customer experience is high on the managerial agenda these days. So they care about it. Is it because they don't have the resources? Well, no, again. They do have the resources. There are more articles, keynote speakers, inspiration speakers, blog posts, books, consulting firms, softwares that help them to improve the customer experience. So they have more resources. Is it because the carrot isn't big enough? Is it because all these investments simply do not pay off? No, again. Because investments in the customer experience do pay off. Studies show that there is a relationship between improving customer experience and organizational performance. Even for monopolists, if there's one type of company that shouldn't care about the customer experience, it's a monopolist. You need to go there anyway. And still, we see an effect. That's strange, isn't it? They have more resources than ever before. They see a positive return. And they are willing to do it. What is going on? Well, Organizations are actually not made to deliver great experiences to their customers. What I see in many organizations is that they're taking initiatives that only scratch the surface, like sending a box of chocolates to their customers. What we need are initiatives that dig deeper, initiatives that go beneath the surface, like the team of today. So organizations are not made to deliver great experiences to their customers. Am I making this up? Of course not. Let me give you some examples that will illustrate this point. First of all, organizations are too obsessed with efficiency. And if you're a manufacturing firm, that makes a lot of sense. 
because the more efficient your production process, the less failures, and the more satisfied customers you will have. But for interactions with people, for customer experiences, it's a different ballgame. Efficiency improves satisfaction up to a certain point, but beyond that point, it actually destroys the customer experience. Let me give you some examples to illustrate. Don't you have the feeling every now and then that actually you are bothering the company? That they are doing something super efficient and you are bothering them? Like my wife and I, when we asked that employee whether my daughter could go to the toilet, she was being super efficient with a certain process and we were bothering her. Or when you reach out to a contact center, how often do you have the feeling that you are disturbing them? That they are trying to get you off the line as quickly as possible? Well, let me tell you, effective customer experiences are often the result of an inefficient process. Like a handwritten note, inside an online order. The feeling that someone took special care about you. Or some small talk at a checkout. From an organizational point of view, that is super inefficient. Printing 100 cards is much easier and much more efficient than writing one. So maybe we need to change something. We need to convince organizations that inefficient processes, so inefficient processes are sometimes the most effective experiences. So that's the first point. Second example is that organizations are obsessed with control. They actually don't trust their customers. And in a way, they are right. Because we know from studies that about 1-2% to 2 of customers actually misbehave. But what do organizations do? They take actions aimed at all customers. <coughs> so why punish 99-98% of customers in order to prevent that 1-2% or from misbehaving? That's what they're doing. My daughter was not allowed to go to the toilet because they feared theft. They feared that people will steal something. But why punish a two and a half year old girl for just that? Or another example. If you go to the store, right, and you want to take a shopping cart, you need to insert a <laughs> coin in there. I don't know about you, but I'm always the idiot that forgets the coin. And prior to the COVID pandemic, that was the gold standard. And then suddenly you had the COVID pandemic, and that was like a wonderful world for me. Because it didn't matter whether I forgot a coin or not. I could just take a shopping cart. But as soon as the waves were over, I needed to insert that coin again. Why? Because they believe that without that coin, shopping carts would end up everywhere, which obviously they don't. Organizations also don't trust their employees. I've worked with organizations that have 40 indicators of whether an employee is working well or not. 40. So what happens in those organizations is that employees do what's measured. And that's indeed what studies show. If you control your employees extensively, then they do what you measure. But if you create a culture that is based on trust, what we know from research is that employees not only do what is asked, but they actually go the extra mile. And the extra mile is perfect for the customer experience. So organizations need to loosen up control. They need to let go of control and start trusting customers and employees again. 
Third example, organizations these days are not structured well. A typical organization consists of several departments and business units. You have a marketing department, a service department, a logistics department, a finance department, an HR department. You have business unit A, B, and C. But where's the customer? Where's the customer? In essence, all of these departments have some relationship with a customer. You just add another department that is again partly responsible for the customer, that is fighting over budget again. We need to take initiatives that dig deep. We need to fundamentally rethink organizations. Why not switch from all these departments and business units to units based on customers? So that one unit is responsible for one big customer or for a group of customers. It's super beneficial for the customer. It's only one department that is taking care of me. So organizations really need to get rid of that 50, 60, 70 year old business model that we're using today. And restructure themselves to become much more customer oriented. What we need is something fundamental. We need a Copernican revolution. Organizations need to realize that customers are not circling around organizations, but it's actually the other way around. It's organizations that should circle around customers. Only then the customer experience can improve. And hopefully, one day, my daughter can go to the store with her own children and they're allowed to do pee-pee. Thank you very much.